Hi everyone, it's Yogini Real Estate Reg here. And I am sending this video here today on behalf of Conscious Conversations with Reg. And today I am my own guest. <laughs> and I'll tell you the reason I decided on creating a video today was twofold. One is when I decided to take on this challenge of creating the Conscious Conversation series, I decided to do it for 21 days and it was part of a challenge that I was in with one of my coaches and mentors, Ms. Jennifer Grace. And I had such a fun time doing the challenge that I thought to myself, I wanted to create a challenge of my own. And it was to challenge myself to do a series of interviews over the course of a couple weeks. And I decided on 21 days on a subject that was close to my, my heart and it was near and dear to my heart, which is consciousness. And Today, being Labor Day, September 4th, I found that it was a little challenging to actually get somebody on the schedule. And I did also want to disclose that I'm doing Monday through Friday for 21 days. So technically, it's a little shy of 21 um, actual interviews, but over the course of 21 days, starting on September 1st, last week on Friday. And my um, guest on that day was Sherry Kane from I Am Complete One. I Am Complete Woman. And... So I wasn't really sure about today and I decided to create a video myself and actually share with you about the evolution and the process of deciding on this project and to get really real and conscious with you, to be honest, and with myself really. And um, I'm going to share with you a little bit about the reason that I chose to do this challenge and my vision, my intention and what brought me to the decision to create it and perhaps share some of my story, shed some light, and hopefully empower and inspire you to share your story. And it basically started a couple years ago. I was gifted with an amazing, amazing experience that at the time I didn't realize was going to shape the rest of my life. And I don't know about you guys, but I certainly have over many, many years really delved into self-development and becoming the best version of myself. And there was, as oftentimes, there's a, a process and an evolution that happens when we are willing to do the work on ourselves, willing to see who we are in a present moment and realizing what it takes to be the person that we want to be. And I didn't know at the time, but I was about to go on an amazing self-exploration and an inner journey and I ended up going through a nine-month depression and it was truthfully one of the scariest things that ever happened to me because I didn't know when it was going to end and I didn't know what was happening to me at the time I just knew that I didn't feel good and I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin I had a lot of negative thought and self-talk and of course there was people around me friends family and a lot of support available Unfortunately, I couldn't access the support because I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to share my story. I wasn't ready to communicate what I was feeling. And I, I, what I experienced was, you know, truly feeling deep suffering because I felt like I couldn't connect with anybody. And I'm actually going to shut down the music here that's behind me because it's uh, kind of my mantra to get psyched up here. But I think I'm, I'm fully engaged here in the process right now. So coming back to you and being present, I was very, uh, as I mentioned, I was, I was suffering and I was challenged in this ex experience of feeling out of sorts, not knowing kind of what was going on with me, but knowing something was wrong. And at the time I was really, as I am now, um, deeper on my practice in yoga at the time I was, I was just a student, I wasn't teaching yet. And I remember it kind of came to a halt when I was in a place that day where it was, I remember there was a period of several weeks where it was challenging to even get gas because I felt like I couldn't do anything right. And I was so just burdened with my thoughts and what I wasn't doing right in my life and feeling like I needed to compare. And I was relatively on the outside. I think most people would say I was doing great. I was doing fine. I had friends, I had family, I had work that I loved, and yet I didn't feel fulfilled. And I remember yoga was my go-to. And I remember one day being on my mat and 
that was the one place where I felt like I could go to kind of shut out the world and disappear from everything for at least an hour, sometimes two to three hours a day at the time. And that day I got on my mat and I could not escape the thoughts. They just kept coming and flooding and they were negative and they were dark and they were heavy. And I'm so grateful and humbled for that day because that was the day that I realized this has to change. And I didn't know it at the time, but as a result of that day, I started to slowly kind of uncover what was going on. And for me, I don't judge anybody that takes medication or goes to um, traditional and definitely not alternative therapies because I feel alternative therapies for me were really important. And I chose to go that route versus traditional uh, psychiatry and medication. And again, I think there's a there's a case by case basis and there's always a reason why things happen the way they do. And sometimes medication is the only way for myself. I didn't go that route and I'm really glad I didn't. And what I did do was I delved deeper into my yoga practice. I delved deeper into my self development and my personal development practice. And what I started to do was uncover those parts of myself that I myself wasn't proud of and wasn't happy about. And there was a lot of shame and there was a lot of judgment, self-judgment. And there was a lot of criticism on my own part of things that I thought I should have done different or places in my life where I felt I needed to be at that time. And I remember I was uh, actually leading a a small group with Sherry, actually. Not a small group. It's a a huge group, actually. It's Women's Prosperity Network and uh, an awesome women's women's group and I was stepping up as a leader and I just remember feeling like I can't right now I can't be seen I can't be in the limelight I can't be a leader (laughs) right now because I need to I need to go inward and I did I stepped down and it was one of the best things I ever did because I took time to figure out what was going on in me what was a feeling and over the course of several months I got better I got stronger (laughs) And I started to really understand what it meant for me to be conscious. So if you're just tuning in and you're just starting to see this video, this is a series of conscious conversations that I am facilitating with leaders and with powerful, dynamic business owners and humans, truly, you know, it doesn't matter if they have businesses or not. We're all leaders in a sense, whether it's as parents or, you know, teachers or even somebody who's collecting trash, you know, we all have a very important role in this life. And so I, I trust that this project that I'm working on over the next 21 days will inspire and empower and motivate you to take action in your life. And so fast forward consciousness, what does that have to do with this series? And why, why am I even doing this? (laughs) So Truth be told, you know, there's a lot of times in my life where I too question what is, the, what is the reason, what is the purpose of things being the way they are. And so I decided to create this forum of leaders that I could interview and talk about consciousness. And so for me, consciousness is being mindful. It's being present. And it doesn't even, oftentimes, it means being able to look at those parts of myself or a subject or a situation and not necessarily needing to understand it or change it, but just accepting this is what it is. So being a conscious person, being a conscious humanitarian means being mindful that there are other people and other situations going on around me. And I don't always agree. Oftentimes, you know, being an Aquarius and and having kind of a rebellious nature, as my family and friends would say, close family and friends, I certainly often don't agree. And the beauty of consciousness that I found in my life and my experience is that I don't have to. The more that I can quiet my mind and I can quiet my judgment towards things, people, and places and experiences, the more joy and fulfillment I have in this world. And that is my value proposition to you, is how can we be more accepting, more kind, compassionate, and loving to other people? And so that was what stirred up this project for me. And I have lots of other ideas and and things that I'm actually putting in place. And you'll see over the next couple months, I am actually working on a podcast and this is kind of the, we'll call it the diving board to that podcast. So I'm really excited about that. And also working on some videos, yoga videos to bring to the community and 
live workshops, retreats, and just a lot of things that I trust will be an inspiration or that's my intention is to be an inspiration to you to help you live a more passionate and fulfilling life because I certainly know there's been many times in my life where I, I say that I want to do something and my, my self-talk or my negative self-talk, we'll call it, I call it the itty shitty bitty committee um, in my head often will try to take it out right? And, and create reasons why it won't work. And so my invitation to you is to surround yourself with positive, amazing, like-minded, positive people that will help you achieve your goals. And so that's what this Conscious Conversation series is all about. So again, whatever you're doing today, you know, certainly this interview is not going to be more than a couple minutes because it's not even an interview. It's more of a confessional. So I'm going to call it Conscious Confessional with Reg. And it's a little bit about my story. And again, just wanted to share with you the intention and the reason behind this Conscious Conversation series and invite you to be part of it. Write me, send me questions. If there's some subject or something specific that you'd like to explore with the idea of consciousness, please let me know because I'd love to get your feedback and find out what consciousness really means to you. You know, authenticity and consciousness for me are married and they work really well together. And without going into too much detail recently, this was another reason why this conscious conversation series popped up in my world. And it was because I was starting to see some areas of people that I was attracting. And I was starting to ask myself, is that authentic? Are those behaviors authentic? Am I authentic? Am I conscious? And so I loved this topic because it really helps me see those areas of opportunity in my own life and in the life of those that I live in life with, how we can support each other. So we're all humans, we all make mistakes, and certainly nobody's perfect. I'm certainly not perfect, and I have yet to find somebody who is. So I would love to learn what works for you and what helps you be conscious. So again, two things. If this video series is helpful and inspires you, I would love to know how we can make it better. What do you want to know about conscious conversations? And number two, if there is something that does work for you, please share it with me because I'd love to find out how we can be more supportive and loving to the world and, and spread more love and more consciousness. So happy Labor Day. Have an awesome, awesome, wonderful afternoon today and uh, coming to you from beautiful Bozeman, Montana. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you tomorrow on, uh, on the interview series. All right. Thanks, guys. Mwah. Namaste. Bye.